Welcome back. So this week it was time to get a few things done to free up some more space in the shop so we could um, do the last push towards the end of the year. Uh, anyway, so the guys got this um, wing uh, spar mold there sort of um, braced up there with the fo foam that they've been putting over the last couple of days with a you know layer of uh, carbon fiber over that. So that one's all done. And as you can see here, this is the other one um, all prepped up and ready just to have the carbon fiber lay it over that so once those two were all done we could uh, get those two plugs and molds uh, out of the way and here we have a box of stuff that's going off the powder coat and those are those um, brackets that we were uh, cutting up the other day for the parachute um, anchor points in the front and, and those are those ones here are part of the nose gear and there's the other parachute one so that's all going off to powder coat and um, it shouldn't take long to get that back because we're just going to do it all in uh, gloss black which is pretty much the color they do most of the stuff of there where we take our stuff and here you can see the engine mount and we've actually just sort of done the phosphorus coating on that because it was starting to get some surface rust on there but that one's all prepped now and ready to go off to powder coat as well and Britt welded the last couple of tabs on there for the uh, belt tensioner for the belt drive system so given that we're running out of space in our other storage facility there we've basically put those um, molds and plugs for the wing spars there up against the wall in the front of our shop and also behind that the uh, the plugs there for the lower skins for the foreplane and here you can see Jeff um, he's bonded in um, just with some five minute um, has bonded in some uh, conduits there into both of the door frames and that's where we're going to be running the uh, electrical wiring um, up to the uh, overhead switch panel and we just we put a couple of extra conduits in there for later stuff if we decide to to add anything like an antenna on the roof or something and here's there's one of those brackets there and just sort of sitting in place there just so you can see how it works with the parachute strap and then that'll run uh, all the way up through the a pillar and then um, into the roof channel there and we just basically put the rest of the strap in a bag to keep it kind of clean and here we are actually putting the first um, of the door frames in place. So they'd been fit a while ago and Jeff had drilled them and clecoed them so we knew exactly where they were going to live. And prior to this, he's already put down um, a whole bunch of the high sole all around the edges of the frame where it's going to meet up. So we're basically, as we put it in here, the, it all sort of just squeezes out around the flanges there. So um, I was just getting sorted out there and uh, lining, starting to line things up um, so we can get this in. So it's been quite a long time in coming and trying to get these and we were waiting on um, some information from Mark exactly how we were going to create the anchor points for the receivers for the bottom um, hooks for the doors and he finally got us um, the information back on that and it was a lot of back and forth from us because again we're sort of you know figuring out different ways of doing things and uh, so it takes a little while and also we were still you know waiting on how we were fi going to finalize those anchor points um, for the parachute straps so now that that's all done um, it was time to get these frames in place and uh, the cool thing is that it's going to sort of um, start the whole process moving now of being able to get the rest of the items uh, bonded in for the fuselage so now that these frames are going in the next thing next week will be to do the braces that go across the floor in between the two frames there and then after that we'll be able to put the forward bulkhead in place and then not long after that the keel uh, will go in and, and as the keel goes in some of the, um, the pulley uh, brackets there for the flight control systems that live under the keel those will get bonded to the floor and in the keel we'll be doing a bunch of different things we've got to um, bond in the retaining brackets there f that hold the nose gear leg in place and we also are going to run uh, three sorry yeah three on either side so six in total um, three quarter inch diameter conduits from the front to the back of the keel and down through those um, it'll make it really easy for us to run different things so we'll be running um, a ground cable and a power cable from the battery um, back to the engine and we'll also be running the lines for the hydraulic system to 
um, retract and extend the main gear and on top of that we'll have the lines for the brakes and then we'll also have the static line for the pedostatic system we'll be going through one of the conduits and then we'll have the um, electrical wires that run back um, to the engine so there'll be an ethernet cable that runs back to where the ECU is and there'll be um, you know power cables running back to the starter um, and what else is uh, fuel the fuel pump so a couple of different things there and on top of that we'll also have wires running back there for the lights in the wings so all of that stuff is going to be neatly put in conduits uh, running in the keel and the advantage of that is we don't have to worry about anything rubbing on anything or moving around or whatever um, and we can just sort of feed things back and forth quite happily and uh, it really ma makes it good because none of those uh, wires will be exposed in the cabin you won't see anything like that so the cabin should be really neat with nothing really um, running back and forth along the floor or the roof or anything like that everything's going to be completely um, hidden in the keel um, and makes it good access as well and, and knowing that sort of everything's just sort of running running through these conduits so that'll all go in and then it won't be too long after that we'll be able to put the uh, windshield in and then uh, the nose um, cover will go on and uh, we'll be just about ready to, to pop the thing up on the wheels. Um, just to give you a quick update as well, so the engine is still sitting over at Dyno. Um, Ed's going to be over there uh, next week doing a couple more things and then we're scheduled to have Drake from Motec come on September 11th and 12th and uh, hopefully do the tuning and stuff for us. So a, a bit of a delay there but there's not much else I can do. Um, it's not going to slow our project down because you know still time plenty of time to get the engine back and run the 50 or so hours they want to put on it anyway there you can see both of the frames are bonded into place now so that's uh, looking good and as I said next week um, you're gonna see a little bit more um, things bonded in so that's exciting and meanwhile the other guys were working on cleaning up the shop and moving things around so got a lot more space in the shop now and of course once we organize our all the tables that we have there we'll have even more so it's nice to have uh, all this room and a nice clean shop again so uh, as we go back in on Monday um, it'll just feel nicer working there anyway uh, that's our update for the rest of this week so thanks again for watching